everyone hope everyone is doing well today I will be going to the Barbies fishery to see how the fishermen go about their daily lives Hi, good morning. So here everyone, we have somebody, the person in charge of this fishery here. I am not sure if this is the correct name, but this person um, will tell us a little bit more about this place. And we're going to hear about her and this place a little bit more, all right? So we're doing a little interview here and we want persons to know more about this here. What is really the name of this place? Good morning. I am Van Minty Van Rook. I am the chairman of Three Doors Fisherman's Squaw. Okay. And uh, what really is done here? On a daily basis, it have boats going at the sea to have catch of fishes. The type of fishes we deal with mostly here is bangamiri, butterfish, and snapper. Okay. Catfish. But the large scale mostly is bangamiri, butterfish, and trouts. Okay. And every day the fishermen, they go out? or We a... have trips both here and we have a daily boat. Does come in. Okay. Normally at the co-ops. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see some of the men, they're coming in there now. Is it yeah. a specific time and they come in every day? We, yes. We have business here, like in the morning from 6. It will be very busy from 6 to 9. Okay, okay. A lot of boats going to discharge, a lot of body going and do mending of their sail. Mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of person will get their work prepared to go to another catch for the next day okay. on that time. And in the afternoon the session, the co-op will be function busily again from 1 to 3. There is where a lot of boats will come in with their catch and do delivery to the trucks. From, from the boat, they, they, we have some truck buyers here with trucks. Okay. The yes, trucks I can have, see lots of trucks. Yeah, the trucks have um, ice in it and they do the storage. And from here, from Three Doors Fisherman Squad, they go to the wharf in Georgetown and do the delivery. Okay, so on all a large these are your scale. trucks? No, these trucks belong to boat owners and truck owners. Oh, okay. Three Doors Fisherman Squad don't have a truck of their own. Okay. They're all truck vending here. Okay, okay. And that is store these? They have to put them in ice or store these? Yes. Right. No, we have, the trucks have ice in storage. Okay, okay. Yes, I see lots of trucks here. So they go to different locations, right? Yes, in Georgetown and do the delivery. Fresh okay. delivery. Wow. So persons in Georgetown, how they buy? Like wholesale, they have special vendors they take them to? Yes, they have a, a wholesale market. And okay. We just go to some bars. You could have that info most from the shop vending. I will okay. introduce it. There's the guy right there, right? Oh, thank you so much. That was very informative. So here we can see some of the fishes are coming out from the boat right now. And we're gonna go see what is happening right from the river there as the boats come in. And the men are right here. Uh -oh. They're taking these fishes to the yeah. different trucks that the person, the yes, manager, Sarah. talked about earlier. So I different persons are here for their catch and they're waiting for their fishes right now. So as you can see, they've just arrived from the sea and they're bringing the fish up by hundred here. So, Uncle, how long took you to catch all these fishes? I'm seeing hundreds of fishes right now. Two days. Two days? Yes. Okay. And how far do you go? What about 20 miles? About 20 miles away. 
Okay, that's clear. Up to the bar, we bar. Which yeah. direction? We're going to quarantine top and so. Okay, quarantine top. Okay, and um, <clears throat> you're out there. You sleep out there actually, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You had how many persons? Two. Okay. And when it's raining, and so what are some challenges you face out there? Like, is it tough? The breeze, yes. Breeze heavy. Uh huh. And here we can see that mostly butterfish and bangamiri here. Wow. Now I know where the persons are really getting their fresh fish from. Isn't this really fascinating and something? Okay, good morning. Good morning. And you want to tell us your name? My name is Andrew. Okay. And Brenda. Okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. So, Andrew here normally distributes. I know I buy fish from him most of the time. And I always wonder, he's the only person I know always get fresh fish. So, you want to tell us, is it every day that you come here to cut, um, get your fish? Come like about three to four times a week and we come buying some fish and he's ride and sell it. Okay, and where do you ride exactly? Is it only in Cotton Tree? Oh, we sell by Cotton Tree, number three. Also, uh, Harvard School side and so. Wow, that's a very far way. And what are some fish you purchase here? You get coras, catfish, banga, fine fish, shrimps, also uh, snap and so. So when you come here, do you find it it's um like cheaper? I know for sure it's fresher because it's right from the boat. Well, you get quantity fish as it at the Trader Cocay. Property. Oh, okay. Property. Wow. Nice fresh nice fish. Thing, right? Kango rangi. <laughs> exactly. Right? Yeah, so yeah. fresh. So when you go, when you buy it right here, we're like, it's what? Minutes to six, seven right now. And then right away you go and take it around the village. You yes, start I selling. I buy like about seven o'clock time when it start, start selling. Okay, wow, look at that everyone. So there you have it, from the fisherman to the villagers, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. So here we have another interesting spot and we're going to find out what's happening here. I see lots of scene. I don't know really what's going on and I see lots of guys are working here. So we will talk to them and hear what they're doing here and the importance of looking after these scenes here. It looks like they're taking care of the scenes. Let's see. You want to tell us um, what really is happening here? Well, we're trying to maintain the scene. Fish, the shark, a bite of the scene. Okay. Wow. And tear it up. a big hole there. Right. Okay. Yeah, so this is to... what the men use, right? Yeah. To catch the fish. Yeah, so you have to maintain the scene. Okay, so yes. First, you're going to tear up and then you can afford to buy your next one. Alright. Oh, and I see you're so skilled in that and knit it back perfectly how it yes, was. Yes, how it is. Yeah, original. Okay. Look at that. So, did you knit the whole thing or did no, you No, no, no. You buy the net. Oh, you buy the net. Then you put on the rope and the net. Okay. And then you walk it. And when you walk it, the shark start biting. You have to bring it up and repair it. Wow. Okay. And they have different lengths in this thing. It's so long. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's actually coming 25 pounds. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does each boat have one of this same? No, you have a um, level like this. Okay, okay. Because one got two shots, so you have to get level. And how do they use the same to catch the fish? You can tell us a little bit. Okay, if you notice the same, you have a lead. Mm -hmm. And then you got float, right? Okay. So when you throw it out to the sea, the lead part go down and touch the globe. Okay, that's heavy, right? Right. You have to go and touch the globe or you can't get the fish. And then the float keep it up. So okay. actually it's like a, like a mesh. A mesh, like a net, a fence, right? Okay. It yeah, so, bar off the water there, right? right? And okay. then the fish swim on. Thank you. Wow, everything yeah. caught in there now. Yeah. Wow. And how do they know if there are fishes there? They wait for a specific time and then they pull up? Yeah, after three hours, three and a half hours, then you pull up. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. In three and a half hours time, the fish are dead. Okay, okay. But if you wait a little more longer, the fish will die. Okay. So it's going to spoil. So you have the perfect time in there. Yes, you have to be, you know. Okay, time. and then you go to different areas. After that, yeah. you pull up, you go to another yeah. spot. Okay. If you go on the top side, like who's our quarantine side, mm -hmm. so you don't get a fish, then you go down like bush lab, okay. ditch field, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know. Wow, different areas, right? Yeah. Okay. 
So you see, I think these gentlemen here, they're doing the most important job because if there's big holes in the net, there's no fish to catch, right? Yeah, the fish pass through the hole. So how long have you been doing this? Oh my, <laughs> about far two years. Really? Wow, look at that. And how did you know to do this? Was it a skill you learned on your own? No, yeah, you, you go out and you start learn, 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 learn. And okay. then you become perfect. So you self-taught yourself? Yeah. Okay. Look at that. So he just learned on his own and now he's so skilled in this, right? He's one of the main person here. We have another gentleman here. Let's go see how he's doing his net here. And they're doing it so fast. And this special thing here, like it's like a big needle. Do you buy that? Yeah, I buy it. I get this. Okay. And a thread. I see it's different thread, right? Yeah, different uh, different twine, not thread, nylon twine. Oh, nylon twine. Okay, that's very good. Shaka Tiro plenty, that's very big mass. Shaka Tiro more plenty. Oh, we got sharks. I never knew we had sharks in these waters. What size? See, only big ones. I'll tell you about that. Okay. I didn't know they had sharks. Really, I'm learning that. Very bad to them, big ones. You can see John Kacha Gurri. It's a Shaka Tiro, it's a very good one. Oh. Yeah. See? Yeah. You can tell how big that shark is too? No, you're not big enough. When a shark pull on your teeth, right? That's the whole big Oh, I see, I see. So the whole big big ass? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the big big? Oh my goodness, look at that. Let me show you something, right? Mm -hmm. How the shark has damaged them, right? See? What's your damage? That's the whole big big ass. Shark has damaged them, I'm going to pass them to them. Mm hmm. It's a big 9,000 to be walking past you, see? Okay. From Big Big? Uh-huh. What's a game, man? I'll Big Big, man. You catch them good, right? Yeah. So the Big Big? I'll Big, I'll Big, I'll Big, man. Wow, well, like they say, it will be cheaper, actually, to patch it than to go buy a whole big new thing, right? Yes, you, gotta, you don't have to maintain it. Too. Yeah, for sure, you have to big maintain, big. right? Yeah. Good job, you see? Okay. So how many hours do you work all day? Every well, day? Well, you have to do how much you have to do. Okay, okay. Yeah, because this is your job, right? Yeah, you know. Okay. people from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I remember that everybody knows the patch is saying, right? They get to learn more by everybody, not everybody who walk one time. Okay, okay, I see. That's important. You want to tell us why they have a scale here? This is how the truckers do purchases. From oh, the boat. Every so product you buy from the boat, you got to weigh. Oh. So it's not basically how to do business. Okay. So whatever you weigh, mm -hmm. you do the calculation for punk. Oh, it's Because you don't use cages. Everything is punk here. So whatever you buy, the truck buy it from the boat. Okay. That's how you calculate it. You pay the boat and shit. Everything will go through scale. Okay, so those so big um, containers. You, yeah, when you go in the truck, you belong to the, it no longer belongs to the boat owner. Okay. That's where you got to pay. Wow, nice. So you this, you know, gonna pack and ship to Joshua. Okay. The company never do export, post it and so. Mm-hmm. You gotta sell some locally. Okay. Wait, that. Wait, that. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Just now they were measuring the fish. I had wanted to know why she was measuring the fish. They said they're collecting length data and that was quite interesting. Is it the first time you're here doing that? Oh, you do this on a regular basis? Yeah. It's okay. a project that is ongoing. Oh, they say it's a project that is ongoing. So actually the mom, she was just measuring and checking the lengths and he was collecting the data and recording it. So what's the purpose of collecting the data and recording it? To see the size of the fishes that they're catching on a regular basis? It's a, it's a study and um, okay, okay. Uh, in their areas they Okay, okay. All right, thank you so much. <laughs> Yes, this is a, um, a, a truck and he will tell us um, which, why is he buying all this fish here. Like they said, the mom earlier, she said different trucks, which are private companies, they buy different fishes and they take it to Jarshan. Is this one of the trucks that takes the fishes to Jarshan, sir? Okay. And um, every day you come and purchase fish here, right? Yeah. Okay. And how many fishes per day? You have a specific amount that you buy or? Different amount every Different day. Different amount, depends on the catch. Okay, and where are these fish is going right now? Yeah, we don't know right. Yeah. Oh, specific yeah. company or yeah, any company? Um, Different company. Okay, so then you have to take this straight now. Every morning you come here, you wait, you take the fish straight down to that yeah, company. Um, 
Depends on the cars and cars, yes? Okay. Okay, and then um, the company, how do they buy the fish? Wholesale? Um, yeah. Or um, buy pounds too as well? Uh, a pound. Okay, because yeah, the guy said they wait, and I see they're weighing it there. Right? And that's how you record, right? So your job is to record how many fishes you're taking and how many pounds of fishes rather, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a better price. You definitely have to make a profit, right? Yeah. So you have your number of price. And what's the price really you sell per pound? Uh, price range fluctuates, you know, so... Okay, you know, so okay. Really okay. Mm -hmm. So your fish price is different from the other trucks here? Or are they all the same prices? Well, everybody pay their own price. Everybody oh, it's your choice how many um, you want to call for a pound or so, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. <coughs> All right, thank you so much. So now I am leaving the fishery. see some boat engines and I will see what's going on here so here we have another uncle and we were just driving by and we saw in his yard he have lots of boat engine so we decided to stop by here and see really what is it that he does with these engine here so we're gonna ask him yes uncle good morning good morning yes yeah, so these engines are you like repairing them right now yeah that is the type of work I'm doing okay and so I also go overseas and do it with the Caribbean island Okay, wow, nice. Mm. And I just bring it by container engine. I will bring it in as well. So, do you sell, you sell new engines as well? No, we are directly bring recondition engine. Oh. I just recondition back then. Okay. I just bring them, fix them back. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And sell it to people, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, these boats that go out in the sea, when they have their problem, do you know what, what exactly to do to get it fixed up there for them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so if I need parts, they yeah, could come by sure. me. You know? Okay. If I can get the parts at the time, I was look for get it for them. Okay. At three, four days, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I just go to scale and parika, just Okay. And fix engine, and then, you know, sometimes buy used parts or there, buy brand new parts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I most find parts that come from overseas, like, you know, engine and thing. Okay. I bring them from overseas. How long have you been doing this work here, really? For 28 years. Well, 20 oh, so you have years. a very wide experience in this field here. Okay. Yeah, almost everybody in Guyana and the Caribbean is in the low area. Okay. Different, different Caribbean, like St. Kitts David, Barbados, okay. St. Lucia, St. Vincent, mm -hmm. St. Martin, and well, a lot of places in the world. <coughs> All right. I travel all the places there. So how how you started first? You had an interest for engines? Well, I used to work at the sea. Okay. Yeah, the natural, you know, workman. Oh. And I uh, just get it, start learning just like that. I never went to school for it. Oh, right. That's good. And today you know every part of the engine and really definitely when you get a problem, you know how, what yes. is it, right? So here it is something there. while mm -hmm. Uncle was talking, caught my eyes here and wow, there are lots of shells. I think <laughs> the wife here has a interest for shells yes. and Uncle is saying that there she collected all these shells. She will tell us a little bit about these here. Oh my. Yes, Auntie. So how did this all started? Well, when I we lived 28 years in Ireland, okay, there is a beautiful that. island of Anguilla. Wow. Oh my gosh, if you go there, the people are so loving, nice. It's okay. almost like you guys. Okay. They, they would accept you like nothing. Hopefully oh my I God. Visit I, just, I, have to I, I, I have to see you to go there. Uh -huh. I just cook for them. This is the only time I stay away, masjid time. Uh -huh. I just cook for the masjid. Okay. Loving people, they come from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Lots, lots of Muslim wow, time like nice. now, dear. Nice. These, you go on the beach and you pick them up like this. You can fit them these there. up on the beach? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Oh and you know, see the most beautiful one yet. In the house, he got the engines because we just reached back. Oh, yes, that's what he said. Yes, we right? just came back here. 
So, so all these you just pick them up just like that. Just like that on the beach. These yeah, yeah, yeah. them big ones, they like keep like this. Yeah, I saw some out on the table. Yes. We're gonna catch those. Yes. So here outside in front of Ante Yard we can see lots of beautiful shells. And the I... table made of fish. Fishes. <laughs> Look at this. Interesting. This is like a an antique area here right by itself, right? And and they're saying yes, this here they do buy these by pongs. Yes. And they eat that. Right? And these huge shells. Wow. Did you polish them? No. They're just like that when you take all the lights on them. Okay. No, yes, sure. that's the way they be. Oh, so when you go on the land in there, how them are beautiful. Mm -hmm. Well, then come out from, from the shell and they be beautiful yeah. just like that. Okay. So why they, why they just make this here? This is where they cut it mm -hmm. and they fall out. Oh. You don't have to dig out anything mm -hmm. because then you just juke it there, there where they follow from the old shell. Okay, okay. And the shell left beautiful like that. Wow. This is so interesting right here. This Can I so have nice. the shell plate looking just like the shell? True, you <laughs> did. You did look for something that looks like oh, that, right? Yes. yes. Oh, and this will cut person's eyes right yes. here in front of your yard. <laughs> So here we can see normally in Guyana here we would see persons having lions and the fowl and so on. This she has dolphins and these were imported too as well from Anguilla. They made these lovely dolphins together. <laughs>